Hello everyone in Medical Scribe. I'm Karar Haider, student at Baghdad Medical College. In the previous video, we talked about the Burzai and we explained its most important details, in which we explained its structure and its classification. Then we talked about its functions. Why today we will talk about the tendon sheath and explain what we have to know about it. The tendon sheath, or we call it sometimes the fibrous sheath, is a thin layer of connective tissue, which is in fact a specialized type of burzai that is considered as elongated or tubular burzai. This tendon sheath will wrap around and surround the tendons of the muscles, so it will be found in the joints throughout the body. For example, in the hands, the shoulders, the legs, and in the feet. So, this is the main or the big picture of what is the tendon sheath. Well, if we come to explain this sheath structure, we will find that this sheath structure is from two membranes. An outer membrane and an inner membrane. So, the outer membrane called the outer fibrous sheath which is made up of collagenous tissue, will support and protect the tendon. While the inner membrane, called the synovial sheath, this sheath will cover the tendon and it will be lined with synovium. That means, the internal surfaces of the synovial sheath will be lined with the synovial membrane. That, as we said in the last video, the synovial membrane will produce a fluid called the synovial fluid. And this fluid, first of all, will nourish the synovial tissue and it will protect and lubricate the tendons and tendon sheath and also it will allow the tendons to move smoothly. So this is regarding the synovial fluid that is produced from the synovial membrane which line the synovial sheath. And it's must to know that this tendon sheath will also compose of two layers. One is the parietal layer, the other called the visceral layer. So, the parietal layer of the sheath will be outer of the two layers, or to the outside from the visceral layer, and it will be attached with the surrounding structures. While the visceral layer will be fixed to the tendon. And keep in your mind that the parietal and the visceral layers will join and glide on each other because of the synovial fluid that lubricate and separate them. So this is the tendon sheath structure. And in order to understand the structure of the tendon sheath clearly, we have to know that the tendon usually invaginates the synovial sheath from one side only. So it is as though the tendon was pushed into the layers of the sheath from one side. So the sheath will not enclose the tendon cylindrically. And the space that made up here, which is something like small fold or a groove or invagination, will be called the mesotendon. And from this mesotendon, the blood vessels will enter up to supply the tendon with the blood. This is usually how the tendon sheaths look like. While in some situations where the range of movement is extensive, the mesotendon will disappear or remain in the form of narrow threads. Or we can say that the blood vessels will perforate the sheath and rise up a synovial fold. So this fold called the veniculum, such as that on the long flexor tendons that exist in the fingers and in the toes. Finally, we have to understand the tendon sheath functions which is in fact four main functions. The first one is that the tendon sheath will anchor the tendon in its place as it passes under the retinacula. While the second function is that this sheath will reduce the friction between the tendon and the surrounding structures. The third function is that the sheath will protect and lubricate the tendon. And the last one, and finally, it will allow the tendon to stretch 
and prevent it from adhering to the overlying fascia. So these were almost everything about the tendon sheath. And that's it. I hope what I said makes sense. See you next video and goodbye.